Hey guys and welcome back to my channel and welcome back to Speak Freely Here where we celebrate the freedom of speech and today let's talk about race realism. <laughs> Hey guys, sorry about another no face uh, video. I actually couldn't figure out how to get my software to work today. It was just really glitchy and not working the software I used to record myself. Or maybe I was just too stupid to figure it out. Because, you know, my IQ and all, being low, get it, race realism, I'm stupid because I'm black on average. Anyway, moving on. Um, so if you've been watching my channel for a while, you would know that I'm big fans of people like Dave Rubin, Sargon of Akkad, and I also watch Andy Worski, just to name a few. And if you are a fan of Andy Worski, you have noticed that he have done multiple, multiple, multiple streams on race realism. And I am a person of color, and you may or may not be wondering, what are my thoughts and my opinion on race realism? What are they, Shamika? And honestly, there's. let me break this down into sections. And this is going to be a long as video, so I don't want anybody freaking texting me or tweeting me that my videos are long. Like, treat it like a, a podcast. Put it on, do your thing, clean your house, eat your food, jerk off, whatever. But it's going to be long because it's race realism, you know? Anyway, um, so the first thing... I felt like the point of Andy Worski bringing it up on his channel. Now, this doesn't. This is not the same reason why other people bring it up on their channel. Not the entire reason, anyway. People like Tara McCarthy and stuff like that. That basically race realism, race realism proves that race exists. That race exists. Uh, duh. I've known that race existed since I was a wee little child like t t the moment I realized that I had different skin color or hair texture or or um sort of facial features and stuff like that I knew that there that race existed you know and especially coming from the black community you're very much told that race exists and honestly I didn't know up until recently that there are people that don't think race exists I, in my opinion, I believe and I always believe that millions of people believe that race exists. So for me, having a conversation uh, with the question mark, does race exist, is like having a conversation if the sky is blue or not. It's like, obviously. To me, it's kind of bizarre to have a conversation discussing whether race existed now i have heard the argument for the reason why people want to emphasize the differences between race is for a hierarchy uh purpose um and the reason why people want to, who are super passionate about race realism is for a hierarchy purpose it was race realism was used against black people during slavery that black people's iq was so low that we're pretty much animals or dogs or savages we don't know how to take care of ourselves we don't ever take care of our young even taking black babies away from slavery slaves slaves were, weren't seen as a big deal they don't know how to take care of their babies they don't even love them they would eat them if they could um they would just shove, shove spears up each other ass all day every day because their iq is so low they're, they're so we were seen as like we weren't we we're less than humans we we're we we're a different species or something like that so race realism has been used for a long time and so people would say that is the reason why people want to emphasize the difference between race to build up some sort of race hierarchy um, but I've never heard the argument whether race in itself existed so if that was the point of the conversation then a conversation the stream should have lasted no more than 10 seconds do race exist yes the end I watched all his streams and I watched his streams as objectively as I could and personally I feel like I was completely objective but I'm trying to be objective by my about my objectivity and say maybe there is a hint of bias in there so listening to multiple streams or conversations about race realism where I personally feel like the majority of the 
conversation of race realism was focused on IQ, like they very rarely went to any other sort of differences. You know, once in a while they brought up brought up the sickle cell anemia thing that black people are more prone to it. Um, they brought up some you know very um, superficial differences like our skin color, our facial features, our bone structure, stuff like that. But for the most part, it was very much focused on IQ. I I do believe that I very much objectively watch these streams I'm a black person I think it would be hard to have absolutely no bias if I listen to conversations like this but to be honest like I feel like being emotional about this situation no matter what color skin you are it's kind of like pointless to be emotional about it because at the end of the day even if this is all completely factual, even if IQ works in the way that they particularly say that it does, even though there's other people that have argued against that, but let's just talk about the people that was in Andy Worski's streams. Even if everything, what they said was on point, factual, guaranteed, it still doesn't affect my life in any way. It doesn't affect my life at all whatsoever. Like, my life isn't going to change. The goodness that I have in my life isn't going to be dis diminished. My freedoms aren't going to be taken away. I'm not going to wake up. I mean, if I, I listened to this and I said, I believe everything they said, I'm not going to wake up tomorrow and just all of a sudden feel stupider. I'm not going to wake up tomorrow and I'll be all of a sudden be like, I don't know how to tie my shoes or work a computer or how to do math anymore because now I found out on average I'm stupider or something like that. Like, it's not going to affect my life in any way. My life is literally going to continue just as great as it is now, no matter what their opinions are there are just some youtubers on youtube with an idea um if they were if they were maybe politicians if they were my boss or my teacher then maybe i would uh be like a little bit more like i i'll have a i'll be more vocal about it like against what they're saying or maybe i would actually invest in more time and actually doing more research in what they're saying but honestly whether it's true or not true it doesn't affect my life in any way it doesn't it doesn't you know what i mean if they were teaching in academia i would have more i would be more a little bit more like um the skeptic i'll be more skeptic skeptical about it um just like when they teach in academia that all white people are evil or all white people are inherently bad or something like that I, just as much as i am against that i will be against an academia in academia teaching um you know thousands of students that black people are just inherently stupider than everybody else i would be against that because that's academia and i just feel like it, ha it has to be very very if and not not against race realism and as a whole, but it would have to be talked about in a way where I feel like you're not just sort of putting in a blanket bias. And then you have to look at the person who was actually talking about it too. If it's a Tara McCarthy, I'm gonna look at her side eyed all day because I think she's racist. She's a polite racist. Yeah. So what? I would guess she's a polite racist, but I believe she's racist. If Richard Spencer became a professor, or if Tara McCarthy became a professor and started teaching race realism, then I would have something to say about it. Um, but but if it was just taught in a very objective way and it was broken broken down very precisely and if IQ was broken down very precisely and we actually looked at the studies and we actually looked at the roots of the studies and all that stuff then I don't know if I would have a problem with it but like I said if it was just blankly put out there like by the way black people are just more stupider that's just how it is nothing we can do about it you know what I mean but as a whole like I honestly I don't know if any of that just made sense by the way but but as a whole like I really don't have a big I I don't have a big problem with it because it doesn't feel like it, it really affects my life that much. So I do think it's a little bit of a, a waste of time to get upset about these sort of conversations. Now, granted, I've gotten upset about progressive things, about leftist sort of SJW bullshit things. But usually I get upset about that because it's been played out in the media. And media has a strong, um, strong or very wide grab on uh, America and as uh, in the world as a whole. I get upset about it if it's being taught in academia without any nuance then yeah, because to me that has some type of power and I can af maybe in eventually affect my life or affect my children's life or my children's children's life at some point. So if race realism was sort of been talked about on news all the time or in media or if it was been taught in academia without any nuance, without any opposition, then yeah, I might then have a problem with it. Now, I don't, again, I don't have a problem with the conversation of race realism, but for me, I... I want it to be a little bit more nuanced and I want it to be broken down a little bit more because I feel like so far all I've ever heard is black people just stupid 
for the most part. That's like the biggest thing they focus on for the most part. If it was taught more like, and maybe this sounds a little bit more le little leftist. It was taught in a way like, hey, black people, white people, Chinese people, Asian people, whatever, all these races, we all have our strengths, we all have our weaknesses, and this is how we can work together, and this is how we can make a better place, then okay. You might think that just because they are talking about the low average of black people, I would feel that way about any race. For instance, race realism is... I've heard the race realism, the t the name that that name that word that phrase race realism. I the first time I ever really heard about it was from people like Richard Spencer or Tara McCarthy. I've heard it brought um, when it was brought up with Rage After the Storm with the li the live stream with Andy Worski and friends um, or not friends depending on who you ask today. Um, but the idea that different races being inherently a certain way and therefore they need to be separated from the masses is not the first time I ever heard of that. I have heard of that all my freaking life. Black, the black community, and not the black community as a whole, but certain sections of the black community have been talking about this since I can remember. Just like there are white nationalists, there are black nationalists. Just like there are white um, supremacists, there are black supremacists, and there's the Hotef and the uh, black separatists. Black people have been talking about that white people need to get out of America for generations now and they use examples like history i've talked about america and white people are not the only race or the only country that have done things like you know genocide or slavery or you basically take someone's land and stuff like that it's gone over that's gone around on around the world in different countries for many many since since fuck it the world be the world existed right but the biggest ones that we talk about, the ones that really in, feel like has impacted the world, the ones that go down in history, the ones that people bring up, the ones that are on the top of your mind when you think of genocide, usually have been done by Europeans or someone who was Caucasian. And so, so in the black community, people who are black nationalists and separatists and stuff like that will bring up that history saying, white people have time and time and time again have proven that they are actually more capable and more willing to do evil, heinous, murderous, destructive acts towards other people. If you look at the people who are serial killers, if you look at people who did mass shootings, they're majority white males. So therefore, they have proven time and time again there is something innate in their DNA that makes them evil, that makes them racist. And by the way, I am not saying that I am saying this. I am saying that this, these are the arguments that black nationalists and black separatists and Hotep and, and black su su uh, supremacists, they will use these arguments just like uh, race realists, people like Tara McCarthy and Richard Spencer will use race realism as an argument to separate us from other races. Well, they have low IQ, they're, left, they're less empathetic and stuff like that. They're using uh, biology, and again, I, I'm not a biologist, I'm not a scientist. Um, I've heard both sides, I've heard people break down the DNA, the, not the DNA, I've heard people break down the IQ thing, I've heard people break down on both sides. I've heard people who are against it, who are biologists, scientists, and say like, no, it's bullshit, and this is the reason why, and I've heard people who are biologists and scientists who says, no, it's completely legit, and this is the reason why. Um, but, so, the black nationalists and stuff like that, they're not using maybe biology and stuff like that, but they're using history, and I'm saying history repeats itself, and this is why white people need to separate from everyone else because it's going to repeat itself. They're going to do this again. We need to get them away from everybody else. They're a dangerous race. And they'll use history to prove that. Um, they'll also say that black people are inherently more stronger, more resilient than white people. We are physically, mentally, and emotionally, spiritually stronger than white people, that we're closer to God, that the reason why white people have white skin, white light eyes, light hair is because they are... Um, they're missing something. Their 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 DNA is weaker than ours. Um, if a white person and a black person have kids, that the black person's DNA will be stronger in that child than white person's DNA and stuff like that. Again, I am not saying this. I am saying that these are the arguments that black nationalists and black separatists have used to argue to build up an argument to say that white people need to be separated from everyone this, else. The same argument would raise realism that's usually presented by a white person is black people ha in in the black nationalists, black separatists, host have, um, and black supremacists have used the same argument in a different way. And I've heard that argument. 
And even though in that case, I as a black person is being put on a pedestal and white people are the people that are being seen as like as a whole, they're this, I still feel just as uncomfortable. So it's not, oh, well, you're black, you, of course you're going to feel uncomfortable with this argument. I feel uncomfortable even when black people are saying that about white people. And I would feel uncomfortable with that conversation even if they were talking about Asian people, or Hispanic people, or Samoan people, or Indian people. I would feel uncomfortable because I feel uncomfortable with generalizations as a whole. Maybe because I'm an individualist, I'm not these, I'm not this people, people, I don't see myself as this hive mind whole of a community, race, culture, ethnicity, or anything like that that i'm an individualist and so because i'm an indiv individualist you see the world how you see yourself i see everybody else as an individual and so when people group people together it just feels completely wrong to me because even if it's true even if everything they say is on point where does that conversation then lead to i don't i can't see it leading to anything um positive there's another thing um with the whole average of the IQ of black people being lower, I don't. I feel like that doesn't count for everything, and it's a bit inc it's inc inconsistent when you look at history and when you look at other cultures. For instance, I've heard other uh, people who are white nationalists claim that black people have low empathy rates, that uh, less creative, and then that like black men just inherently don't want to stay with their kids or something like that. Well, then what do you? How do you talk? Speak for the from the fifty on up to the 70s mid 70s where the black family unit was actually really really strong that we didn't always have a fatherless home issue that we didn't always have a black on black crime issue that we didn't always have an age issue or an abortion or high abortion rate issue that that was not always an issue in the black community that there wasn't always this heavy dependence on the welfare system that wasn't always there so if black people are just inherently have low iqs or inherently have low empathy rates or inherently don't want to stay with their kids then why did that time ever exist? Something happened. If white people are so much inherently better, then why are the fatherless homes on the rise in a white white community? If white people are so much inherently better and black people are just so inherently more stupider, I don't even know if that's a word, uh, why is the dropout rate rising in white men when it comes to college, when it comes to education, and the um, the college rate and the graduate rate is high, going higher, um, increasing in a, in a black community, especially when it comes to black women. So to me, it's like, does, it doesn't stand... It doesn't stand the test of time, or it doesn't really make sense in every single situation, especially and also especially when it comes to African immigrants. And he mentioned this in the, one of the um, Andy Rossi streams when he brought up with Tara McCarthy that some of the highest honor graduates are from um, African countries, and she kind of tried to make it seem like, oh, well, that's like the exception. That's like you know, like okay, one in one hundred Nigerians are smart. Actually, no, that is. In Nigerian culture, in Nigerian culture, education is very much emphasized. Not only education, education, getting a very good job, earning a high amount of money, and family unit is also very much emphasized when it comes to Nigerian culture. You know, getting married young, having kids, staying with your families. Yes, some some um, cultures or some parts of Nigerian culture, some people get more than one wives, but staying with your kids and supporting your family is very much emphasized on Nigerian culture. Going to school, graduating, high honors, and getting a really good job. That is in their culture. That is not like, oh, one or two of them gets to escape the dumbness. No, that's just in their culture. So how do you, how do you explain that? I've heard other arguments um, about this and black people have argued this against black um, African immigrants and there are people there are black people in um, university right now saying that they should stop letting as many um, African immigrants into colleges that they shouldn't be able to get a scholarships that they're pretty much like white people basically that the reason the reason why black immigrant the African immigrants do better than um, African Americans didn't experience slavery they, some people will argue that they, they have some sort of trickle, so ripple effect of slavery, slavery because people were taking from that land, whatever. Um, but they didn't experience slavery, and because they didn't experience those things, the reason why they, they are acad ac academically uh, wise, or even a sort of family orientation or family unit, uh, unit wise, um, because they didn't experience that, they've been able to nurture that. 
They've been able to nurture their IQ level, they nurture their academia, to nurture their family unit, to nurture their culture, to be a bit more stable and have maybe a stronger foundation, right? And because of Black African Americans, they come from uh, they come from that generation of slavery. It was what 300 years of slavery, and people would, might argue that that will affect people's DNA in some way. Um, 300 years of slavery, and then after that, segregation, Jim Crow, civil rights movement, all this other stuff, just being treated kind of poorly, like kind of pretty much like shit. Because of that, that actually stopped our progress of nurturing our own IQ or nurturing our own um, culture. That because of all that destruction, we didn't get a chance to build a big enough and strong enough foundation. And that may be a reason why black people do struggle a little bit more with academia and stuff like that beyond the the, the poverty levels, beyond the, the low income, beyond, beyond the fatherless home, beyond all those things. Because of that, that's the reason why we struggle. But it has like, been proven if you take a small child or baby and you don't nurture that child, not just nutrients-wise, that's important too, but not just nutrients-wise, but if you don't nurture that child with the physical affection, with any type of mental stimulation or intellectual stimulation then that child would actually become stunted not just in physical growth but also a mental and emotionally emotional growth right and this has actually been seen throughout throughout history there's been some studies like that two in particular that stands out in my mind there was one girl that was actually her parents like pretty much raised her in a dog cage like she was never or very rarely let out this dog cage they never hugged her they never gave her any physical um, affection they never or barely ever spoke a word to her so she didn't learn english um they fed her like an animal and when they finally found her, I think she was a teenager when they finally found her, but she had a body of a seven-year-old and a mind of a toddler. Now, this is not with someone who was born mentally retarded. This was someone who was born in a healthy, healthy child. And if she was given the opportunity that, you know, she was given the right nutrients, not just not just food rise, but right nutrients when it comes to mental, intellectual stim um, stimulation, affection, love, physical touch stuff like that and she would have grown up to be a healthy well-rounded human being a human being an adult now she's in her 20s and her 30s she's done a little bit better but she still has a mind of a child and she her physical growth is still very much stunted and it was the same thing for a little boy where her his parents basically made him um live out in a yard and he was pretty much not raised by dogs, but he spent his whole childhood around dogs. And again, he was never given any type of affection, physical touch. He was never given any mental and intellectual stimulation. So uh, he pretty much turned to an animal. Like, not physically turned to an animal, but he, had a, he acted like a dog. Now, this, again, wasn't a child who was born mentally handicapped. This was a healthy baby who was born and was not given the right stimulation. So, I mean, people have argued the whole nurture and environment and nature versus nurture um, argument. I know JF said, well, it doesn't really matter because if you don't have the IQ to to create that environment and to create that um uh, nature or nurture for your child then it doesn't matter so the person who's creating that that environment has to have the have has to have the IQ to create that environment for the child to have the right mental intellectual stimulation so they can you know nurture the IQ and be uh, become a better intellectual human being or whatever if any of that doesn't make sense um but anyway, so people might use that same argument, and I've seen people use that argument that has been proven if you do not give a person or a baby give the right if you don't give a child or that person the right nurture or the right stimulation, then their their growth, their intellectual growth will be stunted. No matter how high IQ they might have, the the two cases I'm talking about were two white children. Just because they were white didn't mean that they were not susceptible to the um, an environmental damage to stunt their mental and physical and emotional growth, right? And so people can use the same argument and say, hey, black people as a community for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years were stunted. They weren't given the intellectual and the mental stability to grow and to nurture their own IQ levels. They weren't given this, the tools and the time to develop their own foundation as a community as a whole, right? We weren't allowed to read and stuff like that and write as slaves, right? So that in a, itself was st stunt your, your, um, 
your evolution when it comes to mental and intellectual abilities, right? And then you pass down to down to down that down to your children. People believe that experiences can also be passed down into within your DNA and all that stuff, right? And so if you have experience, never know how to read and write, and just just limited in in your worldview and all that stuff, you're not given the right simulation, the right tools, the right foundation, and that is just passed down to DNA. Then people can use that and say, see. We told you so. Slavery, discrimination, Jim Crow, segregation, civil rights, all that stuff. This is the reason why white black people haven't had the same academic success as their white counterparts. Because the black community for hundreds of years and then generations after that were because our foundation was knocked off underneath us and because we weren't maybe even given the proper nutrition for many, many years and generations, hundreds of years at that, or maybe because we weren't given the proper tools to grow and nurse our own intellect, we, um, because our education system may not have not been as good. And even now in lower, lower income neighborhoods, public school is horrendous. A matter of fact, Public schools in America, period, is horrendous, but just extra horrendous if you go into the lower income families. So people might take that same logic and say, because I feel like the same people who might argue for race realism will probably argue against progressives saying, well, because of black people had to go through slavery and because they had to go through segregation and because they had to go through the civil rights movement, all these things, this is why you should give them reparations. This is why they should get a leg up. This is why they should get extra help. Because of because of what happened to them, they didn't have enough time to build a foundation so they can nurse their intellects, so they can uh, have a better quality of education and stuff like that. I'm not arguing that, by the way. I'm just saying that. I've heard people use that same argument and say, well, if we can both agree that racism realism exists, then why then do black people in other countries do better in academia than black people here in America? What is the difference? And if you look at the difference from history, one of the biggest differences is slavery, Jim Crow, segregation, and all these other things. And people can use that and say, well, this is the reason why their low IQ is suffering. This is this is the reason why their IQ is suffering. I, again, am not arguing the case that you can blame the past for someone's present failures. I am not arguing that. I am just saying I can see how someone can use that that same race realism argument and turn it against the people who are, are who are the ones who are saying, like, well, black people are stupid, therefore. So um, I want to hear on the, the immigration thing really, really, really quick. Um, they were saying that re one of the reasons why, because you know, people are wondering like, where does this, where, where does this conversation go, and what is the importance of this conversation um, beyond medical? Like, if you say that it's important that we know the difference between races because of health reasons, and you know, doctors need to know what the averages are and stuff like that. Okay, fine. Um, uh, hopefully, that that's not the only thing they're depending on, though, right? They're, uh, they're still doing their individual tests and stuff like that. Um, but if you want to say that the reason why it's important to know the differences between races is because of immigration, that we need to be tougher on immigration, we need to make sure we're getting the right people in, in, into these countries the, with the high IQ, and maybe that just looks more white to you. Um, okay, fine, I understand the argument. At the same time, I think that, again, just like a doctor shouldn't just go off of of averages. I don't think immigration policies should just go off averages either. Like, oh, you have white skin, obviously you have an IQ, you can come to our country. Oh, you have brown skin, obviously you have a bad IQ, you can come to our country. If you're going to go off IQ, then everyone should just take an IQ test. If you don't pass that IQ test, no matter what skin color you are, then you don't get in. You know what I mean? Okay, fine. Um, and then the whole um, trying to reverse immigration trends, I totally agree with that and I, I understand that, even though I think it can still go to an ugly place. But let's say that, you know, America decides to make a treaty or an agreement with other countries. If they make a, an agreement with Japan and China and Africa and India and whatever and say, hey, we need to reverse these immigration trends. We need to tr see how we, we need to see how we can get our own citizens to stay in our country, right? So what you do is you, you, emphasize uh you emphasize the benefits of staying in that country you create a stronger workforce right you create more jobs you you raise the pay um so these people stay there you, you have a better education system you have just better benefits and staying in your own country if you make it so good that people just don't won't want to leave um you know what i mean you you 
I don't know, lower the tuition rate or something like that. You make it to what people don't want to leave. I get that. I understand it. And I would I would even before that, if you want to give people a pay incentive to leave, give me a million dollar check. I'll be on the first plane out of here. You know, go ahead. Million dollars. Go just send me that check to me. So if you want to start doing that, go right ahead. Go ahead and bankrupt the country you want to stay in by trying to pay everybody to leave. Um, but I do understand reversing their immigration trends. I get that. I just feel like you have to really look at the long-term effects of things. Like in China, when they just when they made the one-child law, I do think at the time they were they thought they were doing the right thing. They were trying to benefit their country. They saw that it was overpopulating, and they were like, "We don't have the we don't have enough food, enough space, enough education, enough jobs to cater to all these people. So we need to stop the growth of our population." But now you look now, it's completely backfired. Now the ratio between boy and girl is so fucking screwed up that, you know, half the male population in China, this is not a complete accurate uh, estimate, by the way, um, but a lot of the male population in China can't find wives. They're, like, freaking kidnapping Chinese children to make sure their son has wives. Like, it's just, it's just turned to a bad situation because I think that they were a little bit short-sighted. So I do believe that this whole ethno-state thing, the whole immigration thing, the whole even racialism thing, I think in the long run, it can turn into an ugly conversation and an ugly situation. And I think a lot of people aren't really looking, uh, are pretty short-sighted, even the whole ethno-state thing. By the way, side note, if people want to go and create an ethno-state, I have no problem with that. People should be free to associate with anybody they want to, just like they should be free to uh, make children, babies, love, fuck, marry anybody they want to, and if they want to stick to their own race, that is fine with me. If you want to find a state that's already overwhelmingly white, and you want to make that an ethno-state, that is completely fine with me. I I don't have a problem with that. I don't give a fuck. Um, and I, same for black people, same for Asian people, same for Hispanic people. If you guys want to go find a state or this uh, city or this suburb area, whatever, to be majority this one race, I don't care. As long as everybody's doing it in their own free will. When it does become a problem is where you're trying to make an ethno country. And you're basically trying to say, everybody get the fuck out unless you support my whiteness. I also want to say, I also want to mention that Terry McCarthy basically said that it's okay that she is basically trying to become what is it called well you're like become a natural citizen we like you marry somebody from another country therefore you become a citizen of that country that's basically what she's doing to try to um move here to america she's marrying an american i mean she says she might move somewhere else in europe but basically that's what she that's the only path she is on now even though she argues the fact that other people from other countries should not be allowed to do that because they're brown and therefore on average they may have a low IQ and it's different for her because she's white therefore on average she has a higher IQ and she has higher potential I guess to add something good to this country first of all I want to see your resume I want to see what you have done thus far for this country that's so amazing that you are like one in a billion and we have to take you in um, the second thing is the idea that, well, I'm white, and because I'm white, if you look at history, this country was built, you know, well, on the backs of slaves and stuff like that, but the people who controlled it and, I guess, had the innovation and the idea and the creativity or the curiosity or the bravery to go and conquer other lands and develop a country, if you look at the history of people who innovated, who designed, who created, who uh, found cures for diseases and uh, inventions that we still use today, if you look at the history, then you can say, well, the majority of them are from European descent. Therefore, because I am from European descent, I will create something great too. I think that's like, I think it's a really weak analogy because, or a really weak statement anyway, because the people who did that, they may be from European European descent, but they still make up a fraction of the white race as a whole. They still make up a tiny minutia, a tiny bit of a percentage of the right white race as a whole. So just because you are a white drop in the bucket of the white race doesn't mean that your lineage in particular goes all the way back to someone who did something great for this country. Doesn't mean that your lineage in particular goes back to someone who created, designed, built, and innovated. For the most part, most people who settle here, their, ancest their ancestors are settling. 
settlers. Their ancestors are farmers or people who just came here for a better life. It doesn't mean that they particularly did anything that amazing. Just like when uh, progressives try to argue that, oh, well, all white people should give reparations because their grandfathers and great, 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 great grandfathers and whatever ancestors were are slave owners. Everyone else loves to point out the fact that, no, 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 that was just a tiny percentage. The major majority of white people were just people that were trying to go about their everyday lives. We didn't have anything to do with that. That was a tiny percentage of people who wanted slaves or who were slave owners. Most of us were too poor to have slaves. You, can, you can't then turn around and say, like, if a tiny percentage of white people did something great, that means all white people are great. No, yeah, I'm not saying that race realism isn't real and I'm not saying that on average white people might have a higher RQ than black people. I'm just trying to say you can't put your someone else, some random ass white person's success and say that I now, because I am, we have the same skin color, I now have potential to do something just as great because unless again your particular lineage goes back to someone who created and innovated, then you can't say that. What have you done lately, Tara McCarthy? So no, I think that's, no, it's should be all based off of individual if you want to come into this country pass this motherfucking iq test and then let's speak let's say they get rid of everybody and just white people i just this won't even stop there this idea that, and this, black people have the same thoughts black people progressives feminists whatever if we can get rid of all the men if we can finally just give it all the white people we'll live in a utopia blah 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 that in history of the world that races never fought each other no white people over european countries and stuff like that i've been fighting each other uh uh, since kings and queens and stuff like that so I don't even think it will stop there it'll be like well are you white enough like Tara McCarthy probably wouldn't be able to stay here she's not blonde hair and blue eyed enough it would get to that point where you just got to be blonde hair blue eyed if you're not if you're not that you're not pure I just feel like it will always go to an ugly point and I think history has proven that um and I know people can point to places like Asia and say well they have an ethno state but their ethno state is more it's kind of a natural ethno state because they just haven't had the big immigration that other countries have. Like we have, like if right now, like America was just white, and then then progressives were purposely trying to just get black people over here, then I can see you have an argument. But we already have, we already are a mixed pot. It's already like that. And honestly, I believe what Andy said before is kind of a pipe dream. It's a fairy tale, and that's why a part of me doesn't really have a problem with the race realism conversation or even the ethno state conversation or not ethno state it's more like ethno country uh conversation is because i feel like it's just never going to affect my life because it's never going to happen so if you guys want to sit there and talk about fairy tales and la la land go right ahead talk about fairy tales and la la land it's not going to affect me in any way um so i'm trying to wrap this video up so I'll, as a whole one race exists it has existed for a long I don't I don't even know why this conversation needs to be had. Um, two, do I have a problem with the conversation of race realism? Not really as a whole because it doesn't affect my life in any way. But I am uncomfortable talking about any type of race and generalizing them. Any race, white, black, Asian, Hispanic. That makes me feel uncomfortable. But I just I honestly don't mind the I don't mind the conversation. Again, it doesn't affect my life. Um, even if it's completely and utterly true, it doesn't affect my life in any way. I'm not, it's not going to stop me from pursuing my goals and my dreams, and it's not going to stop me from traveling. Therefore, I, it's hard for me to get emotional about it because it's kind of like I don't care. Um, but I think that I would care more for Andy anyway, for Andy's because I like him to the extent of where the conversation is going to go and I would care more if it was academia talking about or the government or someone who could actually affect my life or my children's life in some way. As of now, it's just a bunch of people talking about fairy fairy la la land that they hope one day exists that in my lifetime won't exist. Um, so yeah, uh, but yeah, I, I, again, I do think there's an argument for the whole immigration, reversing immigration t trends. I can see that. But I'm done. I don't even know where I'm going with this anymore. I've just been going on. I just like, I've been listening to these streams for days now and I've had a lot of, a lot to say and I don't write scripts like a lot of YouTubers. Maybe I should write scripts. I just, if I had to write a script and make a video, I would never get it out because I do have a full-time job and I just, 
I just like talking on top of my head. That's why some people do accuse me of being long-winded and repeating myself. Sorry, I don't write scripts. It just it feels um it feels unauthentic to me to write scripts. So yeah, anyway, I'm done. That was just my stream of consciousness. Tell me guys, what do you think about race realism? Do you think me as a black woman have a lower IQ as you as a white man or white woman who might be watching us or Asian person? <laughs> um, but no, what do you guys think about the whole conversation about race realism? What do you think about the whole conversation when it comes to IQ? Uh, do you think it has a big part to play in someone's future um, or the ability to have a good life in this world or contribute anything to their society? Well, what do you think about uh, people like Tara McCarthy um, and other people who believe that all brown people should leave America unless you support their whiteness or their white culture or whatever white culture is supposed to mean? Um, or do you like what do you think about Richard Spencer and what do you think about Andy Zworski's new sort of um, shows, his live streams? Uh, do you like them? Do you think the race realism conversation is amazing, great, and a waste of time? Um, do you think that he's slowly being brainwashed to becoming alt-right? Um, and what do you think about the other skeptic community as a whole sort of rejecting Andy? And yeah, anyway, that's the end of my show, guys. By the way, I will be doing a lot more no face videos because I'm about to start traveling. I'm about to be on a move. I'm about to go to, to Bali, the Philippines, then India, back to Thailand, and then probably home. Europe and home so depending where I am I will I don't think I will be recording myself and if I am I'll probably be outside or something it just be a new look so hopefully you're okay with the no face videos I I'm still gonna try to show my face now you know now and now and again but yeah that's it guys leave a comment about anything I just said in the comment in the comment section below like this video if you like it and share it share it on Twitter and Facebook and beyond and if you want to continue to follow me on this journey of free speech long-winded and short-winded precisely to the point please subscribe and if you subscribe hit that bell so you get the notifications when I do upload and thank you thank you thank you oh check out the links below I do have PayPal and I do have my Twitter link down below thank you thank you thank you and peace